All right, let's take a look here at what we're gonna do for number five. Fill in the missing numbers and write the rule. So let's take a look. This is something you guys have been doing all year long. Um, you're looking at a pattern and you're writing the rule. And before it used to be written like this, and then at the bottom it would just say rule, right? And you'd have to write that in. So you guys are total pros at this. The only difference here is that now the, the way that it's written is different. It's not written like this, it's written in a table, okay? So let's take a look. How did I get from six to one? How did I get from nine to four? How did I get from 27 to 22? How can I get from six to one? If you had to guess what operation I might use, if I start with a big number and I go to a smaller number, what would your guess be? Either subtraction or division, right? Because in those op for those operations, we start with a big number and we get smaller. So what do you think happened to the six? How can I get from six to one? I can subtract five, six minus five is one right? So how about now, if this is correct, I have to be able to do this to all of these that are here for it to be true. So is nine minus five, four? It is. How about 27 minus five? Does that give me 22? Yeah, it does. How about 54 minus five? Will that give me the answer 49? Absolutely. So this is our rule. It's going to be the top number, which is S minus five. So now to figure these numbers out, what should I do? Just subtract five from each of them. So what's 13 minus five? Eight. What's 21 minus five? 16. And then how about 100 minus five? 95, nice job guys. All right, last couple problems for your classwork. Find the answers. We're gonna practice our long division and practice checking. And then we're going to multiply and subtract um, across zeros, okay. So let's get started. How do we start doing this long division stuff? What's the first thing I need to do? I need to think how many times can I put two into seven? Or I need to think two times what is closest to seven. Can I say um, two times four is eight? So that's closest to seven. Would that work? No, why not? It has to be less than or equal to seven. It can't be higher than it, right? So we did two times four is eight. How about two times three? It's six, right? So I'm gonna write my three above the seven. I write my six under the seven. And then what do I do? Subtract it. What do I do now? Well, I have to write the answer, I guess. Seven minus six is one. Now what do I do, am I done? No, I still need an answer over this four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my four down or bring it down. Now I have 14. Can you think how many times can two go into 14? Um, that would be thinking of it the division way or you think of it the multiplication way. Two times what gives you 14? Two times seven. Perfect. So what do I do now? I have to write the answer to two times seven. I have to subtract it. And now that I have zero, I know that I am finished. So how do I check my answer? Well, I'm going to take the two numbers that are outside of this little house and multiply those together. If my answer is this number inside of the house, then I'm correct, right? So I have to do 37 times two. What's two times seven? 14, perfect. What's three times two? Six plus one more. Our answer is 74, are we correct? We are 74 and 74 are the same number, which means we are correct. Let's take a look at the next one. Pause the video, see if you can do this on your own, hit play and check your answer. So same thing here. I need to decide how many times I can put six into seven, or I need to think six times what is gonna give me close to seven. Has to be seven or under. Well, six times one gives me six. Six times two gives me 12. 12 is too high, so I'm gonna say six times one. I'm gonna write my answer underneath, which is six. Subtract the six from the seven to give me one. Now I need to bring down my two. And I have to think, okay, six times what gives me 12? 
Luckily, six times two gives me 12. We just said that, right? I write my 12 down here and I subtract it. Now that I have a zero here, I know I'm done. How do I check my answers? Well, I'm gonna take the two numbers on the outside of this little house I'm gonna multiply them together, and if my answer is this number inside, then that means I'm correct. So we'll start by putting 12 on top and six here. What's six times two? 12, I'm gonna drop my two, carry my one. What's six times one? Six plus one more. Seven, are we correct? Yes, how do we know? because we have the same answer here. Our answer to the multiplication problem is the same as the number inside the house for division. All right, multiplying here. Let's start with nine times two, 18, drop my eight, carry my one. What's nine times seven? 63 plus one more, 64, drop my four, carry my six. Next one. 9 times 5, 45 plus 6 gives me 51. And then now I have 9 times 1, which is 9 plus 5 more is 14. So I have 14,148 is my answer. Okay, do you remember how to subtract and borrow across zeros? I hope so, because we have to do that for this problem here. Can I take four away from zero? Not a chance, I go to my neighbor. My neighbor doesn't have anything to lend me. So my neighbor has to go to his neighbor, right? Now he can finally borrow because his neighbor has six. So I take one away, making this a five. He gives his neighbor a one, but look, I'm still over here and I have nothing. So my neighbor's gonna cross that out, make it a nine, give me one. So I now have 10 minus four is six, nine minus two is seven, five minus one is four. So my total is 476. Whew, that was a lot of math today. All right, let's take a look at your homework. Here we're reviewing a lot of skills that we've been using over the past two weeks. So if this is tricky, just try your best. We're gonna keep reviewing these skills, but remember, if you can't do a problem on the back side, look back at this side. If you still are having trouble, rewatch the video. And if that doesn't work, you can ask somebody around you or you can create a portfolio assignment in Class Dojo. And you can ask me a question that way or have your parents send me an email. But remember, always do all of the work that you can do first. Don't just stop when you have a problem and then wait for me to get back to you, right? Because then you have all this stuff that you could be doing um, and you might have another problem later on, right? So make sure that you do all the work that you can do before you ask somebody for help and make sure that you're trying your best. Remember, don't be like me when I used to do math. I had, I didn't actually until high school, one of my teachers told me that they thought I had a mental block when it came to math, that I would just say, I can't do it. I don't know. What do I do? I don't know. And she was right. I totally had that. I didn't try to use what I knew. I just thought, oh, I don't know anything. And I really did know stuff. I just wasn't using it. I would just, you know, go blank. So we want to try to use what we know to answer these problems and any problem that we have in life, not just math problems. All right, taking a look at homework. Number one, the high temperatures on April 1st in Jackson, Austin, Carson City, and Des Moines were 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, 42 degrees Fahrenheit, and 40 degrees Fahrenheit, respectively. Write the names of the cities and their temperatures in order from coldest to warmest. You need city names. Please spell them correctly. They're written up here for you. And we need the temperatures down at the bottom. Don't forget this little question. I almost skipped it earlier. How many degrees colder was it in Des Moines than in Austin? Write a number sentence for this picture. Notice which way are we moving on our sheet here. We're moving, first uh, arc is moving to the right. All of them do that. But the second arc is also moving to the right. So what does that tell you about which operation it might be? If you have equal groups, you'll know it's multiplication, but if the groups aren't equal, 
It can't be multiplication, right? So take a look at that one. Number three, list all the factors of each number. Circle the prime numbers in your answers. Prime numbers have exactly two factors. Remember your factors are only gonna be these two numbers that you multiply together to get an answer. So that's what you're thinking about. And a prime number only has one times the answer, one times itself. It won't have any other factors. Number four, write a fraction and a decimal to show how many squares are shaded. Fraction goes here, decimal goes here. Start with the whole number and then write your fraction, which is number shaded over total number. Number five, fill in the missing numbers and write the rule. The rule goes here. Take a look. How did I get from 4 to 15? How did I get from 7 to 18? How did I get from 22 to 33? If the numbers are going from small to bigger, what operation might that be? For the bottom, find the answers and then check your answers with multiplication for the long division problems. Then we have multiplying here all of the digits by the nine, and then subtracting across zeros here. Can I just say, oh, zero minus eight is eight? No, we have to do what we did in the classwork, right? We have to go to our neighbor and see if we can get a bigger number that we can take eight away from, right? All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. That's it for math.